Fish in a Tree by Linda Mulally Hunt. Chapter 14. Boxed in and boxed out. Okay, my Fantasticos, as you know, today is Fantastico Friday, and we are going to end our day with a challenge. I'm going to break you up into groups. Each group will be given a shoebox wrapped in elastic bands, which you will not remove with a mystery object inside. Your job is to guess what the mystery object is. You can do anything in the box, anything to the box to figure it out except open it. There are four numbered boxes that will rotate from group to group. You have 10 minutes with each box, so be sure you write down your guesses. At the end, we'll open them up to see what each object is. He claps once loudly. Any questions? Everyone looks excited. Most glance around the room, probably hoping they will be with Albert. He'll get every answer right. But I end up in a group with Max, Suki, Oliver, and Jessica. I briefly consider going to the nurse, especially when I have to stare at all of Jessica's friendship bracelets. I wonder if each bracelet is from a different friend. I glance down at my empty wrist. Box number one is dropped on our table. Oliver grabs it and shakes it hard. Jessica folds her arms and rolls her eyes, her response to anything not done or said by Shay. I look across the room. Shay is in a group with Albert. She's holding the box and talking. What a surprise. Yeah, Max says, taking the box from Oliver. My turn. I'm surprised when Suki speaks up first. Oliver, we all need a turn, so we must plan. Ten minutes and five of us. Two minutes each. I think about the nurse again. I could lie on that comfortable bed and think. I've come up with some of my best sketch sketchbook ideas, pretending to be sick down there. Max has been shaking the box. He throws it in the air once and catches it. Whatever's inside is heavy, he says. Oliver says, maybe it's a kangaroo. Jessica looks at him in disgust. Oliver shrinks. I was kidding, he mumbles. This makes me mad. Max hands it to Jessica who gives it a little shake and says, I think it's a wooden block, like maybe one of those alphabet blocks. When will it be my turn again? Oliver asks. Suki is taking some kind of notes or something. Looking up at the clock, she says, Oliver, you have 25 seconds of your time left only. Oliver takes the box back and sniffs it and tries to hear something by pressing his ear to the top. Mr. Daniels calls from the other side of the room. I love that, Oliver. Creative investigation. While I wait for my turn, I wonder why Oliver always smells like graham crackers. Finally, I get the box and put it up to my ear and tilt it. Whatever is inside rolls rather than slides. It must be round, and Max is right about it being heavy. I tilt it again with my palm on the side of the box. I think it's a baseball, I say, handing it to Jessica. She does the same test and surprises me by saying, I agree, feels like a baseball. Wait. I say, taking it back. I tilt it again quickly, and the object hits the end hard, and then lightly. It bounces, I say. Would a baseball bounce? I ask, turning to Max. Nah, I don't think so. Maybe it's rubber, like a lacrosse ball. After Suki tests the box, she writes down our answer. Then we get the second box. The second item slides rather than rolls. I can tell because it doesn't move if the box is tilted a little, but once tilted more, will move all at once. And I can feel it scraping along the bottom. It's weird, but I can almost see it. It's heavier than an alphabet block, but I think it's a shape with all flat sides. Oliver tells me it is cool that I'm so good at this. I forget to say thank you because I'm shocked, but then I also forget to be nervous, talking to everyone and feeling like, like I can do this as well as everyone else. And it is the best, the best feeling ever. Suki hands me the box, hands the box to me. Your turn to go first. The third box is harder, but I guess it's in the shape of a magic marker, but much bigger and heavier as it, side, as it slides one way and rolls the other. I glance over at Albert, who is listening to Shay talk again. Keisha is doing the talking in her group, but she is making everyone laugh. I wish I knew what they were saying. When Mr. Daniels delivers the fourth box, he stays. While Max tries to figure out what's inside, Jessica constantly compliments him on everything short of breathing. Max tells us that he thinks it's something light because it doesn't hit the sides hard. 
When it's his turn, Oliver looks up at Mr. Daniels. So what do you think there, Oliver? I can see Oliver wants to be right. He tilts and shakes and decides it's a quarter. Mr. Daniels nods and pats him on the back. That's an excellent guess, Oliver. Well done. Am I right? Oliver asks. You'll have to wait and see, Mr. Daniels shrugs. Can't you just tell me now? Sorry, bud. Oliver seems disappointed. Then he looks up at me, holding out the box, he says. Here, Allie, you're the best at this. Jessica's face looks as if she let out all that pressure. She'd fly into the air like a rocket to the room, to the moon. Allie, Mr. Daniels asks. Huh? Uh, sorry, sometimes when I think, I forget to talk. He laughs a little. I hold the box in front of me with, all, with the long side almost touching my stomach. I tilt the box front to back and then side to side. This doesn't make sense. What are you thinking, Allie? He asks. Well... I begin. If I tilt it front to back, the object hits the long sides of the shoebox. But if I tilt it side to side, the object doesn't hit the short sides. In my mind, I see the object must be the size and the shape of a magic wand because it moves a lot when tilted in one direction, but not when tilted in the other. What? Oliver asks. It doesn't make sense, I say. I look down at the box and shake it side to side hard. I can't get the object to hit the side of the box. The more I shake side to side, the more it hits the top and bottom of the box. Confusing. I look up at Mr. Daniels and his half smile and scrunched eyebrows. Wait a second, I smile. Would you trick us? What do you mean trick you? I shake it again, tilt some more. The ob object hits some sides, but not all sides. Did you tape it or tie it or something? His eyes widen quick and he smiles. And then he laughs. He laughs loud, bending over and resting his hands on his knees. And then he swings his head to the side to look over at me. By this time, the whole class is watching him. Wow, Allie Nickerson, that's amazing. I have done this with over a hundred kids and no one in all of those times has ever been able to figure that out. He reaches over and takes the box, taking the elastic bands off. He opens the box to show all of us what's inside. It's two glue sticks tied together with a string, and then the ends of the string are taped to the sides of the box, leaving the glue sticks hanging in the middle. He comes over and does something a teacher has never done even once in my whole life. He high fives me. Chapter 15, Ungreased Gears. For homework, Mr. Daniel said we have to write a paper describing how we feel about a short story he read today. He says there's no right or wrong answer. He just wants to know our thoughts. Part of my brain knows that this shouldn't be that hard. I would be able to tell him in two minutes how I feel about it but I'll be celebrating another birthday by the time I get it written down. And when I do, he probably won't be able to understand it anyway. Travis comes in the back door, drops his bag, and takes off his steel-toed boots. Hey, squirt. The smell of garage fills the kitchen, but I like it. Hey, I say, trying to get the thoughts floating around in my head to land on the paper. I don't know why the things in my brain get lost on the way down my arm. Travis takes a carton of orange juice out of the fridge and drinks from it. Hello, Travis. Gross. He laughs at me. No one else will drink that now, you know. Good, he smiles. My plan is a success. He walks away, taking the whole carton with him. Travis? He stops in the hallway after taking another swig. Yeah? I know what his answer will be, but I ask anyway. I'm desperate. Can you help me? With that book stuff you're doing? He points, using the carton. Yeah, I have to write something. Whoa, Allie, I can give you new spark plugs, change your oil, even rebuild your carburetor, but the writing, no can do. When it comes to that, my brain is like gears with no grease, parts grinding together. Seriously, it ain't pretty. Please, you have to be better at it than me. He takes a deep breath. Can't you wait until mom gets home? She left a message saying she's closing and I can't tell her I need help that late. She'll be mad. Look, you know I'd love to help you out, but the whole school thing, it's like asking a blind man to drive a bus. Besides, he says, sipping again, I'd rather eat a bag of hair. 
He's trying to make me laugh and the picture in my head is funny and kind of gross, but I can't laugh. I can't. I'm too desperate. I must look sad because his voice is sweet. Seriously, Al, I would help you, but I'm no better at it than you. I'm really not. The next morning, I am trying to decide if I should turn in my paper, knowing Mr. Daniels will probably think I spit it out in two minutes. The truth is, it cost me my whole night and a headache that was so bad it reminded me of the Queen and Alice in Wonderland always yelling, Off with her head! Just because I thought that would be a relief. I worry what Mr. Daniels will say about it. For now, he's in the hallway with another kid. Good morning, Keisha says. I have something for you. And she holds up a, out a cupcake. Cupcake, Max says. Put your eyes back in your head, Max. This is not for you, Keisha says. Me want cupcake, Oliver says, flailing about a bit. Me love cupcakes. You're such a freak, Shay says. That's Cookie Monster who talks like that. Oliver gets dead serious. Not a single thing on him is moving except his mouth. If I'm talking like that, then I'm the one talking like that. And besides, do you really think that Cookie Monster would turn down a cupcake? I mean, it isn't broccoli or nuclear sludge or something. You could tell him it's a big, tall cookie with frosting on it. He'd suck it down like a vacuum cleaner. I bet you he would. You want to bet me? Do you? Jessica begins to speak, but Shay cuts her off with a look. No, I won't bet you. I don't bet on anything, ever, and especially not with you. Shay spins on her foot and leaves. Jessica scurries after her. It takes three quarters of a second for Oliver to be on to something else. Wait, that reminds me, he says. During our class party, I hid a Halloween cookie somewhere in my desk. The Halloween party? Keisha asks. That was weeks ago. Yeah, he starts digging for it, things falling to the floor as he searches. If it's there, it's probably as hard as concrete. Keisha turns back to me. What is with this class? They lose control over food. She shakes her head and then pushes the cupcake toward me. For you. For me? I ask. Nobody ever brings me anything except trouble. Yeah, of course it's for you. Why? Because I'm still cracking up over what you did with those flowers, that's why. She cuts the cupcake in half and shows me that it says, wow, inside. I'm happy. Mr. Daniels walks back into the room. Okay, my fantasticos, good news. All homework assignments have been passed in today. That's worth five extra minutes of snack time. The boys are as excited as if they've heard there would be free pizza delivered too. I hear Keisha kind of laughing to herself. I figure it's because of the boys all going nuts, but then she turns to me and says, you got guts, Allie. I respect that. I like that too, but mostly I like that she likes it. Hey, she says, you want to sit together at lunch? I've been sitting with some people, but I don't talk to them and they don't talk to me and you sit alone. So a mind movie shows us sitting at the same table, talking and me being happy. Allie, what do you think? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thank you. After the best lunch and recess I've had in a long time, Mr. Daniels waves me up to his desk. He has my homework and my journal. He's trying to look all happy and light, but I can see the seriousness underneath. Hey, Allie, I'm glad you turned in your homework, and it's more than you usually write. That's great. I stay quiet. I'm just wondering how long it took you to do your homework. I'm not going to ask you to make changes or anything. I'm just wondering. This feels like a trap. I know it isn't good, so I wonder if it would be better to say I did it fast on the bus or if I should tell him that I worked really hard. Allie? It took me kind of a long time, I guess. I mean, I tried to do my best on it. I look at it. Is it wrong? It's got some good ideas, and that's what the assignment was all about. No worries, okay? No worries. That's easy for him to say.